Uh, stay till the end of today's podcast to see how many of the hosts end up with heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I might already have it. <laughs> it is unprecedentedly hot and we don't have AC. <laughs> Yikes. F in chat for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Midlight Crisis, a real podcast hosted by three grown-up biologists revisiting books from our teens, and it's totally cool. I am one of your hosts, Sophie, and today I have been genetically recombined with a bird that has a superpower, but don't worry because it's only 2%. <laughs> and the bird that I have been genetically modified with today is appropriate oh <laughs> because i am a sticky weather cardinal <laughs> wow yeah you are <laughs> yeah i am yeah so yeah perfect. that's Dang. just what i am <laughs> that's just it very apropos yeah you just imagine like a cardinal but like lying on the ground complaining a lot <laughs> <laughs> just being like uh <laughs> <laughs> that's me yeah yeah what about you guys <laughs> uh my name's sam and today i am genetically combined with two percent of a fishy red duck <laughs> yeah i'm not even i'm not even kidding just fishy red duck fishy red duck <laughs> yeah a fishy red duck i love the idea oh i keep forgetting that fishy is the superpower yeah and it's not just like a red duck that is <laughs> suspicious looking <laughs> yeah no okay the superpower is maybe... to be fishy what <laughs> to be a fish maybe it's suspicious the superpower is suspicious it's like how's mm. that a superpower every time you see that duck you're like mm, <laughs> suspicious. I don't... yeah i don't like what's going on over there <laughs> <laughs> you would be the best for diversions you just send oh, okay. the fishy red duck over there and people will be like, what's up with that red duck? That's okay, fishy. Okay. Do we think it's like, or what if it's like the, it's a duck on the surface of the water, but uh -huh. under the water, it's like it's an angler fish. fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Something uh -huh. fishy about this duck. Something fishy. <laughs> There's so <laughs> the fa And it's the gills that make it fishy, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically ducks are fish okay so is everything else Wait, with a spine though what? yeah because everything's no. a fish it was only just a fish <laughs> how did it end up like this <laughs> how did it end up it was like only this a fish. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome it started off with a fish it did <laughs> How did it end up like this? How did it end up like this? Uh, I ask myself that every day. Every Some fish day. crawled onto land and now I have to go to the office? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I have to pay taxes because a fish decided to breathe air? <laughs> rude. Truly so rude. Anyway, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I should pull up my thing. <laughs> Uh, my name is Hannah, and today I am 2% combined with an electrified bean albatross. What? Uh, <laughs> electrified? Electrified? So, Not electrifying. I have been electrified. Perhaps I'm a zombie. I was Or like a say, Frankenstein monster. <laughs> are you a dead bean albatross? <laughs> I'm a re-alive oh. bean albatross. I guess okay. undead is the common parlance. <laughs> right. That's what most people would say. You've spent too <laughs> yeah. long on TikTok is the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An unalived albatross. <laughs> <laughs> A bean albatross. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. Which is also ironic because I hate beans. Do you think bean means it's a particularly small albatross? That's what I was just wondering. Um, yeah. Which is a little <laughs> counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. Just a just a little guy. So an albatross a little that guy. lives in the plains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
One of those yeah. land albatrosses. You know those land albatrosses that live yeah. amongst the bean fields? The bean fields. Yeah. yeah. Do beans grow in fields? Unclear. I'm, I'm from the sure. city. <laughs> I, I'm from the forest. I don't think beans are there. Anyway, now that we've introduced ourselves, um, the reason we're genetically recombined with birds that have superpowers is because we are reading Maximum Ride, The Angel Experiment. <laughs> How about you guys tell us what happened in the four chapters that we read this week? With pleasure. So chapter 65 starts off mid-fight with some huge raptors ripping into the erasers. What continues to proceed is a violent and descriptive fight that I'm surprised was given the A-OK for a kid's book. (laughs) But besides that, Max gets the rest of the flock out of their cages. Chaos ensues, but they all manage to get airborne. And just as they're about to fly away... Jeb comes running out, begging Max to trust him. He exclaims, it's all just a test, and trust me! But Max isn't buying any of that baloney, and flies off. Mm-mm. We then get a two-hour time jump into Chapter 66, where the flock can finally take a minute to breathe by Lake Mead and hug it out. Mostly Angel, Max, and Nudge doing the hugging, though. The flock all agree they need to find a new home, and they aren't complete without all six of them, and bets on that this chapter had Hannah in its clutches. <laughs> <laughs> the kids all get some much-needed rest, wow. but the heavy rain th- through the night wakes them, and they all take a rain shower and decide to head east in search of a new home, since Jeb knows where their old home is. Just calling Hannah the fuck out. <laughs> oh, oh <my> yeah. God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to come for me so early. <laughs> oh, it happened. It happened. <laughs> I forgot I wrote right. that, actually. <laughs> I was just reading it. I was like, oh, yeah. Listen, oh, it's good. been hot all week. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> chapters 67 and 68 start off part four of this book, which is called... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say What's it? it called? <laughs> I hate it. New yak, new yak, <laughs> new yak. Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Can you say it one more time? Yeah, I need it again. <clears throat> oh, yeah, sorry. Let me take that again. New yak, new yak, yeah. new yak. <laughs> like, I know how it's supposed to sound because people who say it, it that way say it like there are people who say it that way but none of us can replicate it that's not the accent that i have no <laughs> i live in nova scotia so it'd probably be like <laughs> new york <laughs> yeah you say all the r's and, and t's in toronto so i do you barely count <laughs> i can't be trusted for yeah. any correct pronunciation of a place name um anyway <laughs> chapter 60 Seven and 68, New York, New York. Mm -hmm. These two chapters are like a single page cumulatively. The flock is flying away, feeling slightly better about life. But suddenly, Max gets a headache so bad that she starts to fall out of the sky and Fang catches her. Eventually, the pain subsides a bit and she comes to the end. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You you really got stuck with two short ones. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing happened. (laughs) You Nothing. summarized them in almost as many words as were in the chapter. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I could have just read out the chapter, honestly. Yeah. <sighs> okay, new podcast idea. <laughs> <laughs> new, new podcast idea. It's an audiobook. <laughs> Audiobooks, but bad. <laughs> <laughs> I really got it with that one. Really? That's a good one. <laughs> Full of the giggles today. Oh, we had uh, a potluck at work where I ate uh, eight desserts. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's the sugar. Now I have um, a sugar headache and I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Great. God, fuck, that's funny. The podcast concept is we read you four chapters at a time every two weeks, so you hate them as much <laughs> as we do. <laughs> Uh, an audiobook but it's bad (laughs) (laughs) that's the name of the podcast i wonder if we could get away with doing that that's extremely funny people would probably listen to it we should do that just find some like public domain (laughs) books and like read a chapter out loud together and do commentary (laughs) oh my god that's so funny I'm crying. (laughs) You need to stop crying because we have to talk about these chapters. I'm going to cry for a different reason. (laughs) No, those were the last chapters. 
Yeah. Yeah. Two chapters ago, which is eight. Anyway, Ferruginous Hawks don't attack humans. <laughs> no. <laughs> but could they? Could they? Is could the real they? question. I mean, they could. They don't do it in the wild unprovoked. But I mean, if they get specifically close to a specific bird child, who's to say they can't? But they're not provoked. They're like actively aggressing. They showed up to fight. Okay, so... Okay. Maybe. I couldn't find anything about Ferruginous Hawks specifically, but Hawks, as a rule, will aggress. <laughs> oh, yeah? Like, they will attack if their nest is in danger. Mm. So mm -hmm. my note on this is, are these bird kids now bird's kids? <laughs> <laughs> there, see? This is what I mean. So they might not attack normally. But maybe they just, they feel real protective over these kids. So they're like, ah. They're like what? Me. <laughs> Attack. Attack. Me. <laughs> it only just occurred to me right now that I should have, that I could have looked up if Ferruginous Hawks will like adopt abandoned chicks. Oh. Oh, I yeah. I think some will. But again, I don't think Ferruginous Hawks nest closely enough to each other yeah. to do this. Well, and they're not, as we've talked about before, they're not like an inherently social animal. Like a lot of, or like, if you think about birds that mob yeah. animals, it's not hawks. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I think Ferruginous Hawks, while I was looking other, this uh, these other things up, I looked. I was looking around, and it was like Ferruginous hawks, the largest of the Budio, Budio, Budio. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Budio, <laughs> Buteo. <laughs> I don't know how to say it properly. Uh -uh. Um, but it's like the largest of that group of hawks in the Western U.S. And so I was like, mm -hmm. that's probably that's a hundred percent why they picked it, right? It's the biggest hawk. Yeah. Yeah. And then they didn't look into anything about them. <laughs> yeah. That checks. I know we've said this before, but this whole thing, again, would have made way more sense if it was crows. Yeah. Because yeah. crows explicitly do this. They are, like, vengeful and smart and will gang up to attack a predator that's harassing another crow. Or just right. another bird in general, I think. Yeah. <sighs> I know that, like, hawks and falcons and eagles and stuff are way cooler to people. I disagree <laughs> to people who aren't us okay fair to normal people yeah to regular people <laughs> but i just think there are so many cool things that birds do that they just like all piled onto a bird that doesn't do any of those things yeah <laughs> like they also said again at like one of these at some point in these chapters it was just like the birds fierce screams and it's like well they don't do that <laughs> no they sort of like peep don't they they like cheer up yeah yeah <laughs> uh anyway it's fine <laughs> listen maybe these hawks are two percent human and that's why they are acting like this they all actually oh, escaped oh. from the school before and then like set up a wild population up above lake mead you know what so that's why that's yep. why like this. i buy it that makes a lot more sense yep <laughs> somehow <laughs> I agree, and I hate that it does. I hate that it does. <laughs> now they're two percent social. Yeah. What would a two percent bird human look like? Oh no! It would have arms. <laughs> I was gonna say it has teeth. Like <laughs> what? What feature of a human is like beneficial to a bird? Because like the the kids having wings makes sense. Yeah. But a bird having arms. Does not. <laughs> I think it would have wings and arms. Mm -hmm, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's because still a the... terrible imagery. It's, a, I mean, people have made GIFs of it all over the internet, which that's, is great. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But I don't like to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just two arms grabbing stuff. Oh. Just holding on to things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially since, like, human arms are brachiating shoulders right like meant for swinging through trees <laughs> so it's just like hawks 
with their wings just, closed, just swinging their trees. Just swinging their around. Arms. Yeah, totally normal thing to, for those to do. No. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty chill, though, if you could do yeah, both, I guess, if you were a bird cool. kid. Seems like it'd be pretty cool to be a bird kid other than all of the um, abuse. Yeah, other than the science. <laughs> yeah. The other Ferruginous Hawk incorrect fact they got in mm-hmm. this chapter is that the Ferruginous Hawks have a grudge against wolves. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, uh, well, you know, maybe two generations ago, Ferruginous Hawks would have known what wolves are, but um, wolves don't exist in that part of the U.S. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but this would also make sense if the Ferruginous Hawks are only 98% Ferruginous Hawk. You're and they so were right. They were used as, like, intelligent training lures for the erasers at the school, and then some of them escaped and established a wild population. (laughs) This is why you don't want to let your captive-bred animals out into the wild. (laughs) Yeah, because they'll come back to bite you across the back of the neck, apparently. Yeah, you're going to get pack animal birds (laughs) that attack humans. Oh no. Just what everybody wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible for all. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Awful. Anyway, I enjoyed the fact that uh Max manages to like get the cages open for everybody still on the ground so all the bird kids escape. But she physically grabs Angel around the waist and just yep. yeets her up into the air. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. It's like, what would you do if Angel was like, say perhaps had been starved and overworked <laughs> and like assaulted for the past three days and just like couldn't fly and you just <laughs> hucked her up into the air and she fell back on the ground? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm surprised Angel can even fly at this point. Like, she clearly hasn't been preening. Yeah. Like, her feathers are probably all jacked up. Like, I'm imagining it's a situation where adrenaline gets her away and then yeah. the others have to, like, help her. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and then I it? guess they just let her fall when <laughs> Fang has to go get Max. <laughs> yeah, because Fang is the one supporting Angel, who yeah. can barely fly. And then... He just drops her to go get Max. <laughs> just drops her? Maybe Iggy get- takes her? Yeah, Iggy will definitely know what's going on. <laughs> maybe he drops her on Iggy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, no. Imagine if you're Iggy, just blindly flying through the sky, like listening to where your cohort is and then all of a sudden you get like Brah! and your <laughs> little sister falls on you <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's unfortunate uh i did want to mention so just because i was like oh throwing a six-year-old into the sky <laughs> yeah six-year-olds are kind of big <laughs> they're pretty big yeah yeah and i was like how much would like a six-year-old weigh and i because they all are lighter than normal Mm -hmm. i sort of went like four to five year old weight is probably what angel weighs and so that's around like a four-year-old weighs around 35 pounds and so i was like oh what weighs 35 pounds have you ever been on those websites that are like yeah (laughs) objects that weigh 35 pounds like you just put in a number and it'll tell you i love those (laughs) they're so good (laughs) <laughs> um, because they give you like super normal things like okay, yeah. <laughs> a four-year-old weighs the same amount as a cinder block okay, okay yeah like those gray ones i'm like all right i know what that is uh-huh or uh seven packs of printer paper okay oh, that's fun <laughs> good yeah got something that. we can all relate to 140 sticks of butter <laughs> oh i like that what how was that helpful <laughs> how was that helpful <laughs> butter who has ever had 140 sticks of butter in their arms <laughs> they're like you know what this feels like exactly <laughs> this feels exactly like a four-year-old <laughs> and then the last one which is my favorite and extremely relatable uh a bushel of millet <laughs> oh what <laughs> yeah you no, know millet sure. <laughs> yeah and uh-huh. a bushel amount of it yeah definitely <laughs> that's 35 yeah. pounds obviously well th- obviously. that's really good to know also on the list was a four-year-old, and I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> a four-year-old weighs about the same as a four-year-old? Yeah. Okay. Well, I put no, in- that's good. Yeah. I put in what weighs 35 pounds. I didn't put in oh. what weighs the same as a four-year-old. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. 
But I was like, yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we all used to, uh, at our um, aquarium job, we used to have to mix salt oh. by like hucking around giant bags of salt and dumping them into a tub of water. And it was the worst. Yeah. Those bags were more than 35 pounds, weren't they? Were they like 40 or 50? Yeah, because they were 20 kilograms. 20 mm -hmm. kilos. Right. I don't know what that is. It's like... It's 44 pounds. Yeah, because okay. 50 pounds is 23 kilograms. Right, okay. Yeah, okay, so Angel weighs less than a bag of salt. I mean, I could throw one single bag of salt. Like, straight up into the air? Straight up into the no. air, though? <laughs> no. Yeah. But, like, if I had to eat one bag of salt full of adrenaline, I could probably throw it at least a little bit. And Max is stronger than me. I think I could throw it forward. I don't think I could throw it above my head. I think it would. I would fail at roughly my shoulder height. Like that's where my yeah. body would give out. <laughs> I certainly couldn't do it one-handed, and it sort of seems like Max may have done it one-handed. Oh boy, yeah. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. I don't know if I could throw 140 sticks of butter one-handed. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I throw them one at a time? <laughs> just <are> you disassembling <laughs> Angel. <laughs> While we're talking about the butter. <laughs> I could throw 140 sticks of butter, but I could not throw a four-year-old. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Glad we sorted that out. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. You were about to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel like if you had, like, the right momentum and form, mm -hmm. like, if mm -hmm. you, like, bent your legs, you started low, mm -hmm. and, Shot like... Put. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or discus. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. all those, like, Scottish games when they, like throw really heavy things if you had the right form yeah when they flip the log caber toss your four-year-old <laughs> caber toss your four-year-old yeah there you go uh, yeah. i think that's illegal i think it Probably. is too i feel like people do it off like off the sides of pools all the time though yeah yeah sure. so i i feel like it's definitely possible and i feel like if the three of us had the right form you could get some height but like yeah not a lot yeah, well, and, like, if you're fighting for your life, or yeah, for your yeah. little baby angel's life, you could probably yeah. do a little better. Sure. Exactly. If if we practice, we can go to track and field meets for caber tossing. For caber tossing. For your old toddlers. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, so now not only are the scientists doing child abuse, we're also doing it? <laughs> no, ours is just hypothetical. <laughs> oh, Okay. Well, yeah. hypothetical is fine. Yeah. <laughs> but the ones in these books are doing it for real. <laughs> yeah, for sure. In these fantasy books. And these fantasy fake books. Yeah. Totally real. Do we want to talk about the next chapter? <laughs> yeah. Before we jump right over to there, I just want to mention that once again, there's this like fight scene that goes on for the entire chapter where like Max and Fang are like wailing on these erasers and Max is like kicking women in the chest. And then finally, once the fight is over, one of the erasers pulls a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, at the end. <laughs> and one of the birds knows what that is and, yeah. like, snaps his wrist open. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, did we talk about before how one of Iggy or Gasman must have, like, animal communication powers? Yeah. We did, yeah. I think we did. Should I Google it? No. No. Okay. Surely it will come up. Surely. I, surely they're about to have a conversation of like, how did you get the Hawks to come with you? Surely. You know? Surely. Yeah. That's what my thought was, is like, there has to be some sort of communication ability there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Iggy, by some unspoken message, communicates that the battle was over to the Hawks. Oh. How? We don't know. Exactly. Nobody knows. Curious. Hmm. Huh. Maybe Iggy just has a bunch of seeing eye hawks now. That'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, maybe. That would be fun. Um, maybe they are 2% yeah. human. This is just making more, yeah. more sense. <laughs> I know. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it. Oh, also, uh, Max says the line. She says, school's out forever. Uh, which, uh, as we all know, is the title of Maximum Ride book two, I think. Is it? Yes. Three? Oh, uh, two? Uh, it's one of them. Let me... Book two, school's out forever. Book two, yeah. okay, wow. So that's fun. So usually fun. it's fun when the uh, the book says the title, like in the text, but usually you don't get the text saying the title of the sequel. Yeah, 
So what a good time. A good time. For everyone. <laughs> All of <Aww>. us. <laughs> anyway, the next chapter. Yeah. They go back to their little hawk house. Yeah. It's a good time. Oh, uh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hannah, how did how did you feel? Yeah. Oh Do you want to talk? It was how about good. you talk for a little bit, I'm, Hannah? I don't I don't I don't have that much to say about it, but like it made me uh have feelings, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Max like realizes how much she actually like loves her family and she's like oh man i don't go telling them very often but she like woman's up and is like yeah i'm gonna tell them how i feel because we all came like super close to losing each other and we're finally reunited again and it's not the same unless it's the six of us so she says that she loves them and uh of course the two 14 year old boys are like whoa (laughs) and all of the children are like yeah we love you too this is the best we're all the best and uh yeah all the kids have ever wanted is for anyone to say that they love them and max doesn't (laughs) oh my god she finally did it and nudge is like oh my god thank you (laughs) it's because she's been conditioned to think it makes her look weak which is wrong incorrect which is baloney yeah yeah Malarkey is what that is. <laughs> Baloney and malarkey. Maloney. <laughs> Maloney. <laughs> Maloney. Maloney. Maloney and balarkey. Malarkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they incredible. do their like cute little family fist pump. Yeah. And then the little ones all like do a group hug with Max. And Fag and Iggy are teenagers about it. Yep. They're, like, kind of cool about it, but also like, kind of oh, teenagers. Ooh, ooh, yuck. Feelings. Ew, feelings. You'd think that, like, that sort of thing probably wouldn't have been conditioned into, you know, six kids that spent most of their lives in dog crates. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know how the patriarchy got them in there. Yeah, where did they learn how to that it's uncool to have feelings? <laughs> oh! Probably media. I guess so. The media. Yeah. It's the media ruining the kids. Media. But also, we know that Jeb has, like, conditioned Max to be a certain type of leader, which yeah. is a certain type of leader favored by the patriarchy, which would inherently yeah. favor traits that are akin to toxic masculinity. So it only yeah. makes sense that mm-hmm. she would behave in such... Oh, hey. I'm imagining Jeb like yeah. a like kid Fang is crying oh. yeah. and Jeb being like no. real men don't cry. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. He definitely did. That's a hundred percent what he did too. Yeah, that's awful. You have to be strong for the girls. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It didn't even happen Shut and I'm up. mad about it. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> nah, it's, it's it's our head cannon. I think it's real. Yeah, no, it seems very in line with what we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. The good mm-hmm. and the bad. All of our headcanons are true. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we get much actual information in the text. Like, we're forced to make a lot of assumptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what happens when your chapters are sentences long. Yeah, and I'm just reflecting on the fact that it's a little ironic that we're complaining about this when... um we sort of had the opposite thing in Midnight Sun, and we hated that, too. <laughs> I think this is still better than that. Like, Midnight Sun was too much. It was. It was. I will always pick shorter chapters over longer chapters. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Although this, like, chapter 68, the last one we read, that was, like, a paragraph. A paragraph, yeah. That was a bit much. It was stupid. Yeah. Anyway, at the end of this chapter, Max decides, like, okay... I have a really good feeling we're going to go east. And it's like, Max, you're in California. Like, you can't go more west. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, of course, you could, like, I guess you could go north or south. But it's like, you can't fly across the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so. <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> Maybe they don't know. I feel like they know. If they yeah. know where, like, California and New York are, they probably know where the Pacific Ocean is. Oh my god, they're yeah, going all true. the way to New York. <laughs> I just but registered that. <laughs> yeah, they're going pretty far. Wow. It also seems like they are gonna go all the way to New York City. Uh-huh. Uh, which is... I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a good... I guess we'll discuss later if yeah. New York City is a good place for bird kids or not. 
And I guess we'll find out. I have a feeling. No. There's probably a lot of like uh, lighted facades that kill birds. Ah! <laughs> maybe not. The, maybe not the best. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about this because I was like, "Is this feeling the rightness of it?" Which is Max feeling about going to going to the east. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, is this her? What we think is the imminent future site, uh... or whatever. Yeah. Or is it bird migration <laughs> instincts? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, the bird kids probably would be classified under the Migratory Bird Act. <laughs> you can't right? steal their feathers to make a hat. <laughs> no, we've been over this. They're introduced. Oh, right. Okay. So <laughs> they're a, <laughs> they're a, uh, a hybrid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which are not protected, usually. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Yeah. No, but uh, because I was thinking about it and I was like, well, you know, birds do the thing where if they do have migration instincts, it's usually like they have the instinct, but then they like learn it, I guess, you know, like, oh, like they'll go where actually I didn't look this up for hawks specifically, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but because I looked up like homing pigeons and Mm. then like birds that leave the nest and then come back to their home to like have eggs so like natal homing Mm -hmm. like which is the same kind of thing that like sea turtles do and i was like well this doesn't make sense for max because like she was quote unquote born yeah created the bird part was added at the school (laughs) yeah so if anything would be telling her where to go it would be telling her to go back there i guess so maybe she's feeling the instinct and it's like the opposite direction please yeah (laughs) anywhere but there (laughs) um i'd be interested do we know what month it is (laughs) oh yeah um i don't think so i don't think so it's like it seems like summer summer but i guess they're in california yeah i guess so but they were in colorado and it wasn't full of snow and the Mm, ski lodge was empty yeah good point so summer so summer, summer, it could be spring, summer, or spring, fall. Summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I I was trying to think of what, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's anything that, like, you don't have to, like, learn the homing, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it's not all within your lifetime. And so mm-hmm. I looked up the monarch butterfly migration. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, maybe there's something in here that they know how monarchs do it. Because monarch butterflies migrate from, like northern north america ish like northern u.s area and canada to mexico like mid mexico yeah or down to the bottom of california and it and then back up and there are four generations during that time Mm -hmm. so one butterfly doesn't make the whole migration Mm -hmm. (laughs) they lay eggs and then make the next leg which is wild (laughs) so wild it's so wild and so i was like bonkers Right? I was like, maybe whatever, like, genetic thing the monarch butterflies have, maybe there's something like that in birds or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but great news, they don't really know what the butterflies, <laughs> what it is in butterflies. <laughs> the butterflies probably don't know either. The they're butterflies like, uh... don't really know either. Yeah, they, they, they're they like, oh, it could be a sun compass, right? Like, where sure yeah depending on the length of the day and stuff they just automatically go in like a certain direction because of it right mm-hmm. so like in the fall they go south and then in the mm-hmm. spring they'll go north or whatever like uh, it's a lot <laughs> there's a lot there's like a yeah one thing i was reading was like genetic memory theory and then it's like two sentences Whoa. being like maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah Maybe. Yeah. There I don't know. There are a lot of theories out there. One of my favorites that I think made the most sense to me is they're like butterflies leave like a chemical signal. Mm. Oh. That, that makes sense. We just don't know what it is yet. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that actually kind of makes the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That checks. laughs> like they I just follow it. it. Nah, it's uh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Probably yeah. like a mixture of them. But anyway. Um, so basically, long story short is I don't I don't know how that applies to Max. And this is probably just her future sense. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Telling her to go east. <laughs> yeah. Interesting idea, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Butterflies are cool. They are cool. They're wild. Yeah. I heard an anecdote that there was like, but I think it was like in a class where there were like butterflies that made like a weird like movement when they migrated. Like they didn't go in a straight line. They would go like in a semicircle to get to their point. And then like there were, there used to be a mountain there. Oh, Oh, yeah, I think I've heard this anecdote also. And I was like, I, I'm like, that sounds kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. Or there was like, I don't know. But I was like, oh, man, that would be very cool. <laughs> yeah. To be like, why are these butterflies going this way? And it's like, well, <laughs> uh-huh. there's once upon a time they couldn't fly through this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the earth changed. Yeah. But the butterflies remain. Yeah. <laughs> Max just makes a big circle to get to New York because <laughs> there used to be a glacier there. Uh-huh. Can't go there. Weird. My bird kid genetics. Uh-huh. My 2% brain is really like, gotta, gotta circle around this. My, my 2% brain? My 2% brain? Yeah. 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 Max has 2% brain. She has 2%. Um, she two. needs a limitless pill. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, really. Anyway, that's all I had to say about this chapter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although we did find out that they did go out and shower in the rain. Mm-hmm. So, oh, not dust baths. Yeah. Rain baths. Oh, interesting. Good point. Although that doesn't really answer if the bird parts need dust bath because like the human parts would need a water bath. Yeah. But. Interesting. Yeah. They do clean off in the rain. I just had the worst thought. Uh oh. And it's that because, like, normally you would preen, a bird would preen yeah. to get their feathers um, waterproof. What if, like, the bird kids just have, like, really overactive, like, oil? <laughs> like, oh. they just have really oily skin. Uh, probably. <laughs> and they just, like, so much acne all the time. Rub it all over their feathers. <laughs> they just rub their faces on their feathers. Yeah. I feel like it makes sense. You know, like when cats yeah. do the thing where they like lick their paw and then like put it down their face yeah. to yeah. clean it. Bird kids just do that over their wings. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, Gross. I think that's correct. <laughs> Unfortunately. Tragically. Uh, pimply emo boy teen uh, thing. <laughs> poor children. Uh, yeah. On top of everything else, they have oily skin. That's rough, man. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. I would just no. No. No thanks. Mm-mm. Maybe no. they don't though, because no bueno. birds don't get acne. Maybe birds do get acne. I don't I know. Don't know if birds get acne. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not hormonal acne. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Uh, you never know. Uh well, that's that chapter. Now we get to talk about New York, New York. <laughs> New York, New York. <laughs> New York. If I start by going to IHOP, I've never been to IHOP. But I've heard of it from the internet. Yeah. Pancakes. Pancakes, huh? I think I've been. Yep. I think I was disappointed in the pancakes, but I usually am by breakfast house pancakes. Yeah. Mm. Like, I think it's still like a fast casual, which I don't know that it's going to be great. Yeah. (laughs) But the bird kids love it. Yeah. Yeah, And that's all that matters. Yeah. We all know birds love bread. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess they're hawks, though, so maybe they don't love bread. Maybe they... No, we've been over this. They have humans stomachs. Oh, right. Because yeah. they can drink hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and human taste buds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. This is kind of also... Important. Relevant. Yeah. yeah. If they have pointy hawk tongues. but <laughs> <laughs> <Bleh. laughs> Ew, I hope they do. That's gross. Oh. Uh... Maybe they use their tongues to preen like a cat. Uh, uh yuck. Sure. <laughs> I mean, they probably did dumpster dive at this IHOP, right? So, like, that's also gross. <laughs> no, don't they still have money? Yeah. Don't they? They still have money. They could have probably... They probably still... Yeah. Yeah, like, it could have gone either way, though. Yeah, because if you had the money, if it got... If it was people... Well, the ones that got into the school, it was probably taken away. Yeah. But if Gasman or Iggy had it... But also, like, Max has a broken face. Oh, yeah. Angel... It's also, just like yeah. a six year old who has clearly been abused. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like if they went into a, an IHOP, questions would be raised. Yeah. I guess and maybe yeah. they just skipped that and didn't tell us. 
Yeah, that they didn't want to explain it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, maybe nothing happened. Everybody just like looked askance at them as they snarfed down their pancakes. Yeah, they again. We've talked about this before in the Aragon book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, they're. At the lowest, they're probably at like 6,500 feet because that's like the lowest that clouds are. And Max specifically says above the clouds. Yeah. So if they're like higher than that, like like mid, mid-level mid clouds are at like 1,500 yeah. feet, which is like birds don't even really go that high, <laughs> usually. Uh. So... No, they're fine. They're, yeah, I mean, they haven't... What's the word for all of their liquids evaporating? They clearly haven't done that. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> or like their eyeball liquid evaporates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever that, that thing that would have happened to Aragon. Yeah, over the mountain. Oh, right. It was like 12 miles or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unpleasant. <laughs> Unpleasant. <laughs> but still, they're what, like... If they're six... Uh, 6,500 feet off the ground, that's almost 2,000 meters, which is yeah, pretty, pretty high. high. Have we made the joke yet that they can't go scuba diving? <laughs> I don't think we uh-huh. have. I don't think so. No, go on. No, that was all of it. That was the whole joke? Yeah. Oh, Maybe you should okay. explain the joke for people who don't dive. Yeah. They can't, they can't go scuba diving and then take off because you can't go to... I, do you know what's the height? Sam, do you know? Just, like, cruising height for airplanes? It's just recommended, like, if you're diving at sea level, just, you shouldn't go to altitude. Like, really, right. at any altitude. Like, I remember when we were at a certain aquarium, and if you were, like, going up a certain <laughs> tower... Oh, yeah! There was actual concerns. Uh, oh, really? About... I didn't know that. It... No one told me that. I could have No one died. told me that either. <laughs> it, it only came up once, and we all figured it was pretty much negligible when it came up but (laughs) essentially if you go diving you should not go to altitude like at all just like just stay stay at sea level stay within a range i don't know the number off the top of my head that's like official no that there probably isn't a hard and fast number either no because it's just like essentially as you get out there's nitrogen bubbles in your blood and so as you go up in altitude it just becomes more likely that those will stay in your blood and not off gas like they won't leave your system and it could lead to bad things so the mm-hmm. bends the, the bends, bends. Dun, the dun, bends. Dun, 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 dun. yeah i do remember i went diving in new zealand in milford sound and to get to milford sound you have to drive over a mountain mm. yeah and like through through a tunnel part way up yeah. And like the dive shop specifically is like, you have to stay in a hotel the night after diving in Milford Sound. Exactly. Like you are not allowed to leave. Mm. Yeah. Like that's why I'm like, I it, it's not that high. Like it, it, it is very much like you just should not go up. Just yeah. stay. Just stay normal. <laughs> yeah. Just stay. Don't go up a certain tower. Stay normal. It's for like a One day. atmosphere. Right? Yeah. It depends on how many dives you do and, like, how long your dives are. Um, Essentially, like, the more nitrogen in your blood, the longer you have to wait. Mm -hmm. The minimum recommendation is 18 hours if you've done, I think, two dives. But if you've only done one and it's within a certain limit, it's 12. And then if you go over that, it's 24, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So, but luckily dive computers do all that fancy math for us so we don't have to do it Love that. but the general average is 18 hours okay got it yeah somebody better tell these bird kids that yeah <laughs> yeah maybe uh because immediately after this is when Max suffers sudden blinding <laughs> excruciating pain maybe she just forgot to tell us that they put her in like a pressure chamber with like an air tank. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. she's having an air embolism? <laughs> yeah, maybe she... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's terrible. I mean, listen, those do cause sudden excruciating pain. They do, pain. you're not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and the rest of the book is a like a hallucination as Max is dying. <laughs> as Max is dying from air being in her brain. Oh god. Oh my god. You made it so much worse. The only part of your body you want air to be in is your lungs. (laughs) Yeah. Truth. 
But isn't in the whole hallucination, whatever, isn't this, we, we, our th- hypothesis is that she has visions, right? Or that that's like her power yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is definitely like the onset of that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be. That's what I thought. I did think it could be something related to like her tracking chip. I thought that too. Yeah. But I don't, but really, visions. I didn't get beyond that really. Yeah, visions also occur in the head, which is where her pain is. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I went there, but I was also like, yeah. maybe it's the chip, but they've been using the chip to track her before and haven't mm-hmm. done anything like this, which is why I'm like, I feel like it's not that. I think it's her powers manifesting. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. Like, is there some, maybe there's like some kind of implant in her head? Yeah. To make her. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. Make her like not know, able to leave know what to do mm-hmm. or no yeah. to like to make her this quote-unquote chosen oh. one or whatever you know like interesting oh an implant that unlocks the human ability to pill. <laughs> see the future yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> I, that's bonkers enough that i'd believe it in this yeah. case because something about it like doesn't feel like it's natural you know no it's definitely some kind of sci-fi or supernatural happening yeah well like because it feels like angel's power is like maybe not natural it's not the word i mean but like inherent yeah like like it's it's just like yeah i don't know it's developed over time in a normal way Uh uh-huh you know that normal way that a six-year-old <laughs> develops uh, the ability to read minds? Yeah. Normal like that? Exactly. But Max's mm-hmm. feels like the pain makes me think it's like, oh, it's been forced to start or something, you know? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'd agree with that. Related to Angel, for some reason this, like, Max getting this, like, sudden pain while she was looking at Angel, oh. for some reason... Oh, made me think that because like we've talked about how angel ends up being super creepy and like kind of evil in later books did they like do something to her while she was captured about that i think like didn't they i feel like there's a memory stirring from these chapters that they didn't just like you know emotionally and physically abuse this bird child in their care but i feel like they also did something or put something in her to like fundamentally alter her behavior to benefit oh, them and for this, some reason yeah. my brain thinks that these things are related oh that right kind of sounds sucks. right also it sucks <laughs> yeah there's something going on in yeah. there it does suck a lot i agree yeah i do think she isn't looking at angel right like she talks to Nudge and is looking at Nudge, and then she has the yeah pain. But she was, but she was looking at Angel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but also the first one was before Angel was around. Yeah, the first vision things were. Yeah, yeah, not this. That yeah, no. What you're saying kind of sounds right. But, like there's, but something. I feel like it's a later book. But maybe yeah. it's this book. Yeah, I, I don't, don't feel like we're going to get a resolution <laughs> to Angel in this book. No. That's fine. Maybe we'll Although get it. it is called the Angel Experiment, now that you're mentioning it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, they did do something to her that Max yeah. doesn't know about. I feel very confident in that. I just can't remember what it is. I isn't There's a whole book dedicated to her later in the series, I'm pretty sure. Isn't there? I think so. I think there's one called Angel, maybe? Yeah, there is. There's Max... Fang and Angel. Maximum Riot colon Angel. <laughs> uh, yeah. But is that's book five, six, and seven where they get their namesake ones? Right. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yep, we'll we'll look this up in the wrap up episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh I am so I want to look up all of the spoilers because I want to know what happens, but I don't want to read these books. Later. <laughs> <laughs> We're only 45% of the way through this one. I know. (laughs) It's uh, so much book and so so little of it in each chapter. Uh, I, Fang can carry a whole maximum ride. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. For like a while somehow. Yeah. Like, I, uh, (laughs) like birds can't do that. 
No, he's she's probably about equal to his body weight, right? Like, can birds carry their entire body weight? No. No? <laughs> no. Stafira like, definitely can. <laughs> yeah, like, birds can you... We've talked about this before. They can usually only carry, like, a percentage of their body weight, and it's not even usually up to 50% of their body weight. Yeah. And, like, part of me is like, okay, but humans can carry some more than their body weight (laughs) yeah you know like like some of them not me some of them yeah (laughs) well like yeah and i'm like okay so like in maybe a human that it mostly human some bird therefore could carry more than a bird could but i'm like but i think the limit is how much you can lift while flying (laughs) yeah the flying is the (laughs) it's the flying part like does max have her wings open (laughs) and is she like gliding (laughs) It's, it does say no. that her wings, like, fold in on themselves when she starts to fall out of the sky. Yeah. Oh, my wings were mushed between us. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But it's still, fine. that means all of her other limbs are dangling. Yeah. And not in the um, ideal fetal position. <laughs> no. Form no. for flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh god, I love it. Cannonball. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) So Fang had to come out of his cannonball. (laughs) Forget that. Oh, bless him. Bless him, truly. Uh, Yeah, (sighs) I don't know what's going on here. He does complain about it, which is very funny. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, what have you been eating? Rocks? And what does she say back? She comes back with the best zinger. Why is your head missing some? <laughs> <laughs> Bazinga. Bazinga. Classic. Bazinga as some. Bazinga. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, got him. <laughs> got him. Yeah. And that's it. And that's all that happens that's in it. this chapter. <laughs> uh, d- listen. Anybody have anything else to say? <laughs> nah. Nah. Great. Um, let's guess what's gonna happen next then. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh next chapter. All right. As always, I'm gonna read you the first sentence of the next four chapters, and you have to guess what's gonna happen. Okay. Um, chapter 69. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> the sentence is an hour or so later, I thought that I had recovered, but from what? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I also wonder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, I thought she had a memory lapse and was like, wait, what was wrong with me? No. Um. No. <laughs> maybe. Maybe we'll find it out. Perhaps we'll find Hopefully, out. Hopefully, the answer is in the chapter. Who knows? That would be so cool if it was. Yeah. Um. All right. Chapter seventy. Uh. Your sentence is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, sweetie? Oh. Oh. Is it Max talking to Nudge? Or Angel. Or did they go to Dr. Martinez? No, that would that's that's way too much to happen between two chapters in this book. But the, the last chapter could have been like, I don't know what happened. I know where we need to go. Oh, maybe. Although that sounds like it would have been the end of the chapter. Because like, whoa, a cliffhanger, yeah. where are they going? I think the next chapter would have started with landing at the Martinez's house was like eating a cookie or something like that. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been like that. Well, good guess. Dang. <laughs> chapter 71. Okay. <laughs> I think if a twig had snapped right then, we all would have leapt 10 feet into the air. Uh they're hiding yeah question mark or someone told a ghost story fang (laughs) did you tell a ghost story to scare the children wow gosh fang you should know better i i don't know i'm yeah i'm (sighs) guessing they're just hiding but from what more erasers it's always the they must well yeah they're probably already being tracked that wouldn't surprise me no because that's the only thing that happens in this book (laughs) (laughs) great guess yeah (laughs) chapter 72 Okay. I can't believe it, the gas man said for the 30th time. Um, I really don't know. I don't know either. Well, good guesses all around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> it still seems like it could be Dr. Martinez related. Maybe. 
Maybe I just want it to be Dr. Martinez related so that yeah. I can write my fan fiction about her. <laughs> the fix it fan fiction. The fix it fan the fix. Fix it. <laughs> Everybody lives, nobody dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, well, that's four chapters. Um, I think you gave it your all, and we'll see how <laughs> right you are next time. Yeah, appreciate it, bud. Uh, <laughs> uh, but un- but until then, no. Now, <laughs> right now, <laughs> let's talk uh-huh. about what else we're reading. Um, I'm still reading Once Upon a Tome. I haven't picked up in a book in three weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Well, I picked up Once Upon a Tome to read two more chapters last weekend. Working on it. Really good book. Having a great time. Uh-huh. Don't want to read right now. <laughs> uh huh. That's fair. What about you guys? <laughs> uh, I finished reading Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood, which was uh, great. And then I am reading Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson because it is still my birthday month while we're recording this. So Woo. that, Woo. and then still a bunch of books I've mentioned before I'm reading because I'm also just slow. But I started listening to Cursed by Marissa Meyer, which is the second in her like I don't remember what fairy tale it is, but it's her gilded duology. But I my loan is up in two days, and I have only <laughs> read twenty seven percent of it. So um, <laughs> go go go! <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna finish that one. So, uh, well, I'll have to wait for my loan to get back or just get it on Audible. But anyways, that is what I'm reading. I finished a bunch of the books I was reading. So the two books I'm currently reading, I started last night. And they are the audiobook of Many Things Under a Rock, The Mysteries of Octopuses by David Scheele. Ooh, nice. Which is a nonfiction about octopuses. And that was then This Is Now by Essie Hinton, which is like her follow up to The Outsiders. Nice. And I also recently reread Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey uh-huh. McQuiston because when this episode comes out, the movie will have just come out and <gasps> I hope it's really oh, good. Oh, no. that's going to be like my whole personality. <laughs> I've watched the trailer like I've watched time. it too many times. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. It'll be half your personality because the other half will be the Barbie movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right that's now, true. my my personality right now is Taylor Swift and Barbenheimer. But then yeah. when Red, White, <laughs> and Royal Blue comes out, that'll hop in there. Yeah. <laughs> One quarter of each. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm about to be insufferable this weekend. Don't worry. <laughs> Amazing. You're laughing. It's your birthday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody say happy birthday to Sam. Aww. Wow. I mean, Thanks. I guess it'll be late. But for now, go That's back fine. in time <laughs> to time. Sam's birthday and tell her happy birthday. Yay. Woo. Woo. And this is also coming out when we will be reading When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, which is our August book club book. Cli- book. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. The words are there, yeah. just not in the right order. Book light? Book light? Book light. Mid-light. <laughs> yep. Mid-light book club book. Jesus. Yep. Heck. <laughs> that one's going to be good, though. Yes. Uh, but in the meantime... If you liked this chapter of Midlight Crisis, consider rating and reviewing us on Spotify or your podcatcher of choice. You can talk to us and find fun-related content on social media. We are at Midlight Pod on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, currently Blue Sky. I don't know if that's... (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. We'll find out. Unclear. Unclear. And all chapters of the show thus far are available on our website, midlightpod.podbean.com, and on YouTube. And... For when you make a podcast about books you used to love as a teen and end up hating them all. Think of this as an occupational hazard, you witch. (laughs) You witch. You witch. (laughs) When you're not allowed to say bitch in a (laughs) YA novel. I'll say it. You bitch. (laughs) 